<laughs> We're ready. This is um, ready to start. Here we have contracts. This is a two session um, deal we're going to have tonight. We'll cover half of it. Uh, we'll do some exercises, some group activities. And then Thursday night, we'll do the rest of it. Okay. Contracts. 17 questions. Y'all remember how many questions are on the test? 11. 13. 13. The total test. Oh, okay. oh no. 140. 140. 17 of them are right here out of this material. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to pass the real estate test, you're probably going to have to learn something about contracts. It's not that complicated. Y'all been doing contracts your whole life. You've been signing leases and you bought cars, you've rented houses, you've bought houses. Everybody's dealt with contracts. It's just laying out, uh, expressing everyone's intentions is what a contract is. We got some learning objectives. We want to understand how contracts work, what's in them, how we um, may have a missing something. It could be flawed. Can it be fixed? Can it not be fixed? Um, one thing that's just changed in contracts recently is they put a time is of the essence clause in it. And as we're going to learn later on, time is the essence means if you miss that date, you are in breach. Oh, ouch. No, I want this thing to go to closing. We had one today that was supposed to close, uh, I think, Thursday. Now we find out we've got to have a traveling notary. All right, well, we can't get a traveling notary by Thursday, so we had to get, an, ex get, one. We had to get an extension uh, through, I think, mm -hmm. uh, Friday to give us an extra day to get a, a traveling notary. I got to a friend that does that. Well, I th we got several people. I got a, a tenant that he lives in uh, Jacksonville. Yeah. He can't do it. No, uh, but this guy, somebody's got to go to his house to do the rest of the uh, contract for him. You want me to give you that number before I leave? Oh, well, I think the attorney's taking care of all that right now. I just, I hope they are. Uh, enforceability contracts. Like that. If it's in breach, what are we going to do? We got issues here. Addenda. Amendments. I got a little thing here. Y'all notice it on our, our question parking lot. Mm -hmm. When you have questions, and you'll put them here, we'll get to them that night. But you see, this one right here is on that very thing. Addenda and amendments. Easy to remember. An amendment, you're mending it like it was broken. You need a band-aid on it. An addendum is for something like personal property. An addendum is going to be added to the contract at the con time the contract was written. It's added. Now, if you've got to go back and change that closing date, now you're mending it. So that's going to be an amendment. Anything that you do to go back to a contract after it's done, you're mending it. It's torn or broken or something's wrong with it, and you got to put a little Band-Aid on it. Okay, so amendment. amendment is going to be after the contract is fully executed. Okay, after the So that's just hanging there. Little things like that hanging around here. Here we go. Woo, look at all that stuff we got generally. That looks like a lot of stuff, but it's not. You're going to, we're going to breeze through this and you're going to say, ah, I understand that. Contract clauses. What are the requirements in a contract? When does it become binding? We've signed it, one signed it, the other one's not happy with it. Is it binding yet? What's going on? Where are we in this? Contingencies. What is a contingency? How do we deal with them? How do we get rid of them? How do we add them? All kinds of things going on with contingencies. And there, I mentioned that a minute ago, time is of the essence. That's just dropped in our contract, uh, I think, last summer. It wasn't there before. And now, time is of the essence is there. Multiple offers, counter offers. Uh, we're going to talk about those a little bit. Moving into our contracts. Here's the, the gist of it. See the little guy on the bicycle? That's not a bicycle, is it? Mm -mm. It's a unicycle. 
How many wheels does that have? One. 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 So una is one-sided one. contract. It's going to be a unilateral contract. One person is made an offer. I will give you something if you will give me something in return. That's an offer. If you accept my offer as is and communicate back to me that you do accept it, then we have a two-sided contract bilateral. Mm -hmm. But right now we're on one party. Mm -hmm. We want to make, say, an offer on a house. You think we're going to offer them full price? Mm -mm. And we're going to ask them to do anything else for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course we are. That's going to be our offer. We're going to send this seller a contract, which is an offer, saying if you will sell me your house for this much money and leave all the furniture and the car and the boat and okay. everything, uh-huh, that's the way it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's your first offer going in. Mm -hmm. And the seller gets that and looks at it and says, Oh, no, I can't do that. But I can do this. Mm -hmm. And you start whittling away in some of your stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe you do want it all. Well, if you, do, you want all this furniture, he'll probably sell it to you. Mm -hmm. But you think he's going to give it to you? No. He's probably going to say, Well, it's worth this much money. Let's put that on top of the value of the there house. You mm -hmm. there if you want it that bad, there it is. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to come back and say, eh, I don't think I want it that bad. Mm -hmm. I too much for that furniture. <laughs> but how about this? Mm -hmm. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And see how we're getting tighter and tighter mm -hmm. with each one? Mm -hmm. Well, finally there's going to be a point where we're both going to say, okay. We're in agreement. We have a meeting of the minds. That's a legal term, meeting of the minds. That means we're on the same page. If that seller got that initial offer from us, and even though it was you know, way low less than he wanted, and we were asking for all this furniture and all that stuff, let's just say he's in a bind. He might take it. Yeah. And if he does, all he's going to do is put his signature on it, initial each place where he needs to initial, and then he's going to communicate back to us that he accepts our offer. Mm -hmm. At that point, we've got our two-sided offer. Mm -hmm. Even though we're getting all this extra stuff from him, mm -hmm. he was in a bind. Yeah. You never offer him full price. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a really hot, let's mm -hmm. just say, um, a really hot uh, property in, say, downtown um, Mountain Brook. Yeah. Five bedroom, three bath house right at the corner of Euclid and the English Village came on the market for $99,000. They'll pay it because they want to be there. We'll have people lined up. Mm -hmm. They want to be there. And they won't offer $99,000, will they? No. They'll probably go up more than mm -hmm. that. Right, will go up. They yeah. want it. See how this works? Mm -hmm. I got something you want. Will you pay me for it? Mm -hmm. You pay me what I want. I'll give you maybe. more so I can have it. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. We'll get into the multiple offers and how all that fits together. But right now, let's just look at how we made this contract, how it actually formed. So we got that. Uh, we communicated back. That's an important part of our contract is the communicating back. In fact, let me, let me go see if I can get one of my friends to help us explain this a little better. Uh oh. I got one of my friends, Sheriff Taylor, to help me explain these contracts a little better. <laughs> yeah, he can do it better than I can. Okay. Now, um, a contract. With every contract, you're going to drink a cola. Mm -hmm. See that? You got it. You send a, you got a cola in your hand. You're drinking a contract, you got a cola. Acronyms. C is our first little acronym there. You must have consideration for a contract to be valid. Something for something. Got to have it. Without that, the contract would not hold on its own. The C, and then you have the O, which is an offer. Remember just now we had the, the buyer offered a, a low price, 
but he did make an offer. Mm -hmm. So that one over there, and then you got all our legals. The L in our code is our legals. This is the part people have trouble with. So I try to simplify it. Got to have four underpinnings in our legal to make a contract valid. The first of those is it must be for a legal purpose. You think maybe we can jump from legal purpose to legal porpoise? Mm -hmm. Y'all can, can make that jump in your mind? It's got to be for a legal porpoise. You got three other things that have to be in that contract. You've got someone that has the authority to do the deal. We're going to represent that with Sheriff Taylor. He's the authority. See the badge? He says, I can do it. I have the power to do this. Yeah, I can sign the deed on the uh, uh, city hall and sell it. He's got the authority. Mm -hmm. Then we have to have competence. Y'all see Floyd there? <coughs> oh, I heard somebody laugh. They don't, and you knew Floyd. Well, Floyd, you just weren't sure about him. No. <laughs> he, he, he might have been competent. At one point. Might have been. <laughs> uh, I, I need to interject this right here. When I first started doing this, I thought that way too. Then I found out that Floyd actually had a stroke during the first season and Andy wanted to keep his job for him so they still had him standing there and you'll see in the pictures he's not using his left hand so I feel bad about making him the incompetent one but he fits yeah I know the story with them we've got one other thing we've got to have is age and that's Opie to sign a contract, let's see, um, it's not on that one. Um, to sign a contract in Alabama, you must be 19 or 18 and married and sound mind. I don't know how that works together. Mm -hmm. But you got to have the four things here for our legals. Who can tell me what our legal what is? Yeah. Our legal. The authority will competence and the age. age and it's for yeah. a legal purpose. Legal, legal purpose. Y'all keep that legal purpose and all the rest of it will fall in place. Now you have two types of consideration. We had our consideration up here. We got two types. We can have valuable consideration. That's cash or it's equivalent. Y'all see that cash, a hundred dollar bill there? I think that's real. <laughs> no. It's got Chinese pink writing on it, so it's probably not original. The other kind of consideration you can have with the contract is called good. You see the little lipstick right there? Good is between family members. You'll have a parent give a child uh, property. Well, they're not going to say, well, I'm selling to you for $100,000. They're going to say $10, another good and valuable consideration. And that's what they're talking about. That'll be between family members. You won't probably ever see that except between them. All right, so we've got one more thing to deal with down here on our cola. We drank most of it. We got right down to the A, and that's acceptance. That must be communicated back to the offeree. Or there is no contract. Offer acceptance. I could send you an offer that's full price and everything else, and you say, Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted, and you sign it and never give it back to me. Do we have a deal? No. No, because it lacked the acceptance. So, must have cola. What are the colas? Tell me about cola. Consideration, offer, offer legal, legals, acceptance. acceptance. So you're going to drink your cola, you know about the valuable consideration, the legal purpose, age, competency, and authority to do the deal. All right, now let's look at this. Two, we had two people now that have made a promise and then a promise back. I will accept what you have offered. Meeting of the mind, mutual consent. Another word for that. There's a word that they have on just about every test 
that they know that you get confused by. It. And that's this word, excatory, right here. Excatory. Yeah. <laughs> excatory. This is a real estate word that means both parties have signed it. There's a two-sided bilateral agreement that is headed to closing. There are other things that need to be done still before it gets closed, like maybe some contingencies such as financing, inspection, other things. But right now we've got a two-sided ready-to-go contract and it's called excatory. It's not finished yet. We've got a couple of words here, or I should say a suffix is here. See the O-R-E-E? -E? Commit that. Stick that in your head really hard. Offer or. Offer or. <laughs> Offer E. The or's the give or. The E's the giddy. Or and E. And then those roles reverse. Because when we first made our offer, we're the offeree, the sellers. Yeah, you know, we're the offeror, the sellers the offeree. Mm -hmm. And then once he said, Oh no, I can't do all that, once he made one mark it on that contract, it is dead as a hammer. He can come back the next day and say, I didn't mean to make that mark, I'm gonna take it like it is. Is it gonna be a contract? No, because he made a mark on it. He said no. But now, um, real first, first, okay. There's our legals. See them right there? Legal purpose. Age. Competent party authorized to conform. Got all this right here. Consideration, that's love and affection, can be good. Or valuables, cash. And it's kind of funny in this business, you'll have people who say, oh, I can pay cash. That doesn't mean a thing in this business, but they think it does. They think they got a better bargaining position and so say, I can pay cash. At closing, everybody's paying cash. Everybody. You get it from closing, you're taking a check. So they're not benefiting one way or the other. Well, really. they used to. They, they, would say they I'm paying cash and they think they get a better offer. Well, if somebody's up against a timeline that may get them a better offer, but most people are not. Most people say, give me an offer, let's negotiate. I know we're gonna take six weeks to work through closing and all that. Down at the bottom, you've got to have voluntary consent. That was a mutual meeting of the minds. Voluntary consent. What we're dealing with right now is some situations where You've got um, uh, multiple generations living in a house and the kids want the old ones on out so they can sell the house. And they talk grandma into, you know, you'd be so much happier over here at Pleasant Valley. Yeah, they got shuffleboard and all the stuff you like doing. Let's go over and look at it. The next thing you know, they're, they're pushing her to sign the house over them. That's the rest. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Sheriff Taylor sits down in Floyd's chair. Do they have a contract? Y'all were quick to say yes. What kind of contract do they have? They already knew he was coming. They knew he was coming. So this is going to be based on past expectations. When he sits down in the chair, what sheriff thinks gonna happen to him? He gonna get a haircut. Gonna get a haircut. <laughs> Lloyd picked up the scissors. Sheriff thinks he's gonna stab him with them. He gonna, no. He gonna play with the hair. Yeah, he's gonna, yeah, he gonna get his scissors out. Uh, you think uh, he's been doing this for a year? You think he come in? Well, Floyd, how much is a haircut today? He the same wood man. Yes. <laughs> and you think that? You know, he left it too close to my ears last time. Probably not. He just sits down and he's clip, 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 clip. Couldn't be cutting off much. No, because he go here for a week. Yeah, he go all the time. But <laughs> do they have expe expectations just from him sitting in the chair? Okay, I already know. 
This is called an implied contract. It's based on actions. He sits down. He knows what to expect. Floyd knows what to expect. They have done this over and over. That's an implied contract. Now, first time they sat down, well, the sheriff sat down, he said, well, Floyd, I know you're a new barber. I'm the first person you've ever done. I want you to get it off my ears. You don't want to touch my collar. And I got a little cow lick right here. You need to take, watch that now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the boy said, well, for all those services, here's our fee schedule. That'll be a quarter. And the sheriff said, woo, that's okay. <laughs> uh, and he, they agreed. That's an expressed contract. Sheriff expressed what he wanted. Off the ears, off the collar, watch the cow lick. Expressed each thing. Yeah. Our home contracts are the same way. The price is. Closing date is. Financing. Everything is written out, expressed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing implied in a real estate contract. Everything has to be reduced to writing. You don't get to the closing table and say, you know, we talked about you re leaving the, the lawn tractor. You still going to do that? Yeah, we should add that in the contract. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen now. But had you written it in the contract as an addendum, we're adding this personal property to the contract, we want the lawn tractor mm -hmm. at no value. Mm -hmm. And they signed that contract, now we're at closing table, you're going to give me the keys to the lawn tractor. Mm -hmm. Could they have amended it on the spot? Not at the closing table? At the closing table, probably not. Mm -hmm. If they had a you know, if something goes wrong, things may get renegotiated there, but for them to come now and say, give me something extra, they better have something extra to give you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, probably going to say, we got that down at Tractor Supplier and it was $3,900. You can get a sale just like we did. Finance it for 36 months just like we did. So the applied contract, that's normally not in a real estate contract? Never. You never have anything implied in real estate. Everything is going to be reduced to writing that's expressed. Okay. Everything about that contract. Just like today, that one we had to get the extension on, everything in that contract is carved in stone. The closing date, they took a chisel and a hammer and they, they wrote that date in there and if it's not closed by then, then uh, whichever side breached is in breach. Yeah. Okay, got the voluntary consent. There we go. Got them. All right, back to our purpose here. Is their purpose legal? Do they, are they riding a legal porpoise? Mm -hmm. Getting his hair cut, I'm guessing that's pretty yes. legal. But what if Floyd whispered in his ear, Andy, you got some heroin down there in that bus last night. Oh, Can yes. I get some of that? <laughs> Would that be a legal contract? No. No. Because it was for something illegal. Must be for a legal purpose. Uh, both of them of age. Competence. That's why I got Floyd in the picture. We're not sure about him, but we've not seen any piece of paper that says he's not. So as far as everybody's concerned, he's okay. Uh, you think they're both legally authorized to perform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, that's his hair. Mm -hmm. Lord, that's his barber shop. Promise something for something. Mm -hmm. Did Sheriff just, he implied that he's going to give him a quarter mm -hmm. just by sitting down there. Mm -hmm. So that's a promise of something. And I'm going to get my hair cut. That's the something I'm getting in return. Must always be something for something. That's consideration. Voluntary consent with both parties. Yeah. Nobody drug him in there and said, you've got to get your hair cut today. No, didn't happen. And here we go. Here's the sheriff's shirt. Everything that you need to know about a contract. It's right there on his shirt. 
got those notes there. All right. Got anything kind of confused right now before we go on? We good? That's the legal, and that is what you need for the contract. Yes, you're going to drink a cola with every contract. Mm -hmm. Part of the cola is this L, the legal. And then you've got consideration here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Offer. I didn't have a contract here, but that would be the offer. offer. Mm -hmm. and there are legals. And then the acceptance, which has to be communicated back to us, or else there's not a two-sided contract. It's still a one-sided contract. As far as the the um, legal competence, what if Flo wasn't a licensed barber? He just mm -hmm. printed him one out off, off the internet. It was assuming that the internet existed back then. Okay. Um, I never thought about Floyd's license. When I put this together, I was thinking about legal contracts and real estate. Mm -hmm. I try to show you, you've got to have these things and this. If Floyd does not have a valid license for his barbershop, the, the law says uh, he's still doing the job. He still should pay his taxes. If the city doesn't catch him, he'll probably get by with it. What if he but, cut Andy but, hair and mess it up? Well, Andy could sue him. For, for, because he's not legally competent. Well, he admit, that's not true. Having that license, Floyd's license doesn't have anything to do with competency. Competency's okay. here. Oh, okay. okay. That's why I got Floyd in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, Andy? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. We don't know about Floyd. That's why I had a hard time coming up with people putting this picture. <laughs> I'm surprised you thought of Floyd off the Well, we're going to have some fun with the aunt with the open oh, goo. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah, I mean, didn't know this. It's not common knowledge. But Obi's got a drinking problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Paul let me do anything I want to do. Yeah. Mom. Ain't B going to call him Obi? That's right. So, <laughs> Obi started drinking. Because of Ain't B. And Obi. Opie went into the barber shop one day and said, Lord, can I rent your garage apartment? And Floyd says, How much? <laughs> Opie said, Well, my allowance is. <laughs> they come up with a price. Floyd says, Okay. I'm, another mine. I'm not. Yeah, you see where we're going. Um, Hey, that's just a garage apartment, yeah, you can rent it. And so they sign a lease. Opie signs the lease, Floyd signs the lease. Do they have a contract? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not of legal age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's not of legal age. So mm -hmm. we get into, um, well, let me buy, let me go, on, go and give me this one before I jump to the next one. That's um, our four legal. The legal purpose, the age, the competence, and the authority. To yes. Do. Thank you. <laughs> consideration all for legal, legal and acceptance. Consideration. 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 Yeah, something for, oh, okay. Trying to look at it. All right, we, we covered this one just now. A valid voluntary legally sufficient binding enforceable promise between two or more competent parties to do or not do something. Where we got a problem here is all of their contract between Floyd and Opie looks good. Excel. I see voluntary, legally sufficient, binding and binding. Mm. May not be binding on Opie. No. Oh. Let's just jump through this when we get to Opie. Express, we've already covered that. Statute of Frauds. For a contract to be enforceable, it must be in writing. Have we heard that before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do they call it a fraud? Statute of Frauds. Statute of Frauds. I have no idea how they got that name other than uh, before they had that rule, people could just go to the courthouse and say, Michelle sold me her 40-acre farm. I want the deed. Hmm. And it could boom, it could happen. Mm -hmm. So you got the statute of frauds. So now we got to have a 
documents and she sold it to me, got to be notarized, and then we're, we're legal. <clears throat> Statute of frauds, um, real estate, any real estate contract that transfers uh, uh, a tenancy in the property must be in writing except a lease for less than a year. You can lease somebody a property for six months or six hours or anything up to a year mm -hmm. and you can just start collecting the money. You collect the money, say, every first of every month. Mm -hmm. All right, well, this lease with this person would be valid for one more month. Okay. Every time they pay you, they got another month. So they started out with a month-to-month -month lease? I didn't think you could start out with a month-to-month. -month. Yeah, some people could. Uh, the apartments are kind of ratty. The rats are saying, what else you got? Mm -hmm. You, you may have to rent those cheaper. Because hmm. I, I worked um, at a property that um, we used to do the short-term leases through, mm -hmm. you know, um, property management companies mm -hmm. for the corporate apartments. Mm -hmm. And so, but that's like the minimum that I'm, a, that I'm aware of that both lease it to the company. And then the company did the short-term leases. Mm -hmm. AHI is big into mm -hmm. that. Like yeah, that, that was one of our yeah. uh, clients. Um, they're in, um, I think in Birmingham, I'm not Jefferson, I'm not sure how big of an area. If I do a lease for less than six months, I got to collect lodging taxes. Mm -hmm. So we don't do anything under six months. Mm -hmm. But for the test, mm -hmm. if you're on a month to month lease, it's, you've, got one, you've got to give them a one period notice to get them out. And they've got the rights to stay there one more period, even one month to month. Mm -hmm. That's um, statute of fraud, a lesson a year. An implied agency, not in Alabama. We did this in agency. We talked about this extensively. If you act like a duck, walk like a duck, quack like a duck, they think you're a duck, you might get in trouble because you are. Um, ostensible is the name I have for it, an implied agency's fraud because they think you're representing them. All is covered by contract law. Here's where um, we're going to deal with Mr. Opie. A valid contract has all of these elements. Everything's good, two-sided, everybody's happy. Then we have a void contract that was the one where Floyd wanted to buy some heroin. That was never valid. Even if Andy had said yes, they had a two-sided agreement, it wasn't valid because it was for an illegal purpose. Now, here's Opie. Opie's contract is voidable at Opie's option, not at Floyd's option. Floyd's got to run it all the way through. But Opie, any time up until age of majority, and it's what in Alabama? 19. 19. Yeah. He's got about, what, 10, 12 years now to tear that place up. <laughs> he can have parties in there and do all this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and then tear it up, and then, you know, week four is 18th birthday, 19th birthday, he can go to Floyd and say, I'm out here, give me my money back. Mm -hmm. And probably can get his money back as Floyd and he can. You better. Okay, that's got him. I'm doing it too. Um, don't take somebody out and show them houses and then say, okay, let's go to the bar and do the contract. Mm -hmm. And let me start pouring some alcohol in you. Okay. Loosen you up. Chlor chloris? Oh, under the influence. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, all they got to say, they got me drunk. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up to you to prove otherwise. Don't feed them and don't give them any drugs. No, don't, don't, don't give them any drugs. 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 do Let's just cut out these real estate agents. I'll meet you down to the attorney's Friday and we'll change papers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you can't do that. Sure you can. But it, it ain't right, though, is it? Sure. Not she, if she meets me down there and I bring my checkbook, we're good. We don't have to have a contract.
contract to go to the lawyer and, and say, oh, I'm buying okay. your house. Oh, okay. Okay. But the lawyer, but something would have to be drafted, though. Well, you, you got to have a We could have walked in the lawyer's office at the same time and said, hey, you got a minute to write us a contract? He said, I got lots of minutes. A license to write a contract for real estate. Yeah, a, law, a lawyer can write it for you. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But something would have to be written. Yeah. Right. But you go in there and tell them, say, well, I'm. I'm buying your house. It's a hundred thousand dollars. I got you know all these pennies rolled up. Oh, good. Wheelbarrow. Oh no. But it's money. Right. But no. <laughs> well, that may be a reason for you to say, "No, I'm not accepting that." Accepting and you could. Mm -hmm. And you could say, "Go down to the bank, turn that in, and bring me a cashier's check." Mm -hmm. And I'd probably do that for two hundred thousand. So an attorney can actually write a full contract. Or yes, a attorneys do not. Yeah, attorneys do not have to take without this class take, without having to have a real estate license. No, they don't have to take this right. class. They can they can write a contract. They know how. Um, you wow. can't like it, especially if you're going to get into something commercial. Mm -hmm. You probably want to have a commercial attorney, attorney. help you with it well, because those are long term deals and lots of complications. Things that we don't think about every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, like environmental stuff. Uh, we don't think about that selling houses. Um, yeah, attorney, you can write the whole thing. Um, here, we just, uh, we got sidetracked on here, but the whole purpose was a real estate verbal oral contract is not enforceable. It can be performed if we both show up. But if neither one of us show up, neither one's got any recourse against the other. Kind of get out of sheriff's service. Mm -hmm. Walk oh, past. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, I don't see me sweating. Just I didn't realize how hot that little shirt was. <laughs> Whoo! Do you have a contract? I do. So, what type of contract will Floyd have with Opie Avoid. to rent that apartment? Avoidable. Avoidable. Good. We got a couple of clauses that may get into contracts. You need to know what they are so you don't let them get into your contracts. One's an adhesion clause. An adhesion clause is what you get when you get a cell phone or cable service uh, or any app you get on your phone. You accept their terms or you don't get their app. Mm -hmm. That's an adhesion contract. You take everything you want plus all these things we're going to put on you. You got to take that too. Can't do that in a real estate contract. You're going to have to have everything, something for something, all the way through. And you got an exculpatory clause. That's what a landlord will try to do. I'm writing a contract saying, if I have to evict you, you've got to pay my attorney. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. Can't write that. You can't put in your. <clears throat> Our sales contracts are written by an attorney. It's just fill in the blanks. So we don't have to deal with any of this stuff anyway. Okay, what we got here? On our hard questions, we got down to the questions then. We said you must present all written offers in a timely manner. That means you get an offer today, do your net sheet with it, and get it on to your party. Do it now. Don't wait. Till tomorrow, or the next day, or the next day. We had one that uh, came in today as offer on a property. Um, we got it, I think, at 169, and they offered 125. Mm. And we've had a couple of other lowball offers like that. And the owners already okay. sent us instructions: don't send me any offers under 160. Mm. But you still, will you still have to? I still, the offer came to us written, and the rule says I must communicate all written offers in a timely manner, including a net sheet, plus many closing costs. Got to send that with it. But it says unless instructed otherwise. Yes. She told me, I don't want any more offers under 160. But did you have it in writing? Uh, it's probably in an email. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to send it to her anyway. Are you required? Uh, I'm required by law to send it to her. But this says if they tell me don't do it, I don't have to. 
But you I'm don't not, do it. I'm not going there. I'm not going to. Six months from now, this person that sent the $125,000 offer sues me because I didn't give the offer to the owner. Right. And then I can't find the email where she said, don't send me anything under 160. So I'm going to. So you could email. Do you have to? Could you send it to her an email and it's her an option whether she wants to read it? Yeah. Or would you have to give it to her as writing? Well, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll create a net sheet. Mm -hmm. And then I'll save it, and then I'll forward her the offer along with the net sheet. Okay. And then she can open it or not. Not, but you've done what you're supposed to. I did what I was supposed to. In fact, I I think I did more than I was supposed to. But in this business, you got to cover your ass set. Right. Ain't that what I just said? <laughs> right, you have to cover yourself. I just said that I said C Y A. I was nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, see, get out of my head. Get out of my head. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the interesting thing. Earnest money. Y'all know what earnest money is. Earnest money is money that Ernest puts up to show he's earnest about doing the deal. <laughs> earnest will be cheap sometimes and he'll give you five hundred dollars. That tells me uh Earnest is not earnest. I want to see at least a thousand dollars earnest money to tell me you're serious. You'd be you'd be shocked how many five hundred dollar earnest money offers we get, and they walk away and just let the house seller have it. Hmm. We're not buying it, wow. and you can't force them. So that if you when you get into this, ask for a thousand dollar earnest money. They're less likely, less you know, likely to walk away. away. I, um, and this is misunderstood by a lot of agents. They think earnest money is required for a valid contract. It is not. It does not have to be there. In fact, sometimes they'll be so fast, you won't have time to get it. Uh, if it's a, a, a property they're buying cash and the owner doesn't owe anything on it, there's clear title. You can close this in three days. Mm. The check won't even clear that fast. So. You, you don't have to have earnest money. If you get it, you're more likely to close the deal, though. And people are used to getting it. The way earnest money works now is you don't get it with the contract like we used to. Used to, agents would bring you the contract along with the earnest money check. Mm -hmm. Now you get it emailed, and it's on DocuSign. And there's a little thing there, it's probably a picture of a check. Oh. And they'll say, well, if we come to two-sided, then we'll bring you the check. Or what's coming more common now is we're having the checks made out to the title company that's going to close the deal or the attorney that's going to close the deal. If you're going to get in trouble in this business, it's going to be because of your security deposit accounts. So more brokers are saying, well, why do you want one then? Mm -hmm. let, the, let the title company hold it. Because so, you have to, for auditing purposes, you had to have to give too much of an account of funds yeah, you, if you, you have you, an account for that you purpose. You got all this money you're fooling with anyway that you got to fool with. This is money that you really don't have to fool with. Mm -hmm. It's not required for a valid contract. Let the title company hold it. And then when the deal would close everything, they got all the money and they issue all the checks. Everybody's happy. Next thing on our list is the buyer's agent has the right to present their offer to the seller. You think, I don't want them doing that. That's their right. Agents don't trust you because you've got a bad reputation not turning offers in. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, it could happen. Mm -hmm. So if I get a contract with one of your clients, what am I going to want to do? Present, yeah, I'm gonna buy, I want to present this offer myself to your seller. Mm. You, you should be there. And once it's presented, I need to get up and leave. But the selling agent, well, they're going to go in and say, oh, this little couple's just going to be the perfect couple for your house, and they're going to fit in with the neighbors, and they're going to go to this church, and they're going to do that. And they're trying to convince the seller that, they're going to love their house just like they did. Mm. I've never seen it happen, but I'm 
just the law says you can't do it. Wow. Next one, delivery and offer of acceptance should be in writing. You've got the offer in writing, you need to send the acceptance back in writing because it's going to be the contract where everybody signed and initialed, everything's done. Mm -hmm. That's in writing. If you skip that step, then who's going to say you actually did the acceptance? Mm -hmm. But if you send it back to them email, here's a full two-sided contract, you got it in email at 1037 Monday night, boom, we got a record. It was in writing, delivered back to you, we have a two-sided contract. Uh, we're seeing more of this, this uh, time. And that happens when you've got not enough properties on the market to meet the demand. Right now, pretty much, you could throw a rat hole on the market, and if the price is right, somebody's going to buy it. Mm. So we've got this to where we're saying, okay, um, I'm in town buying houses in East Lake. I'm going to buy five of them, so I'm going to come out here and I'm going to make offers on 15. You got until tomorrow night at five o'clock to accept my offer, mm -hmm. and then. Tomorrow night, if you didn't accept it, then that's just one less. But that's the way they'll do it. They'll throw out blanket offers. And it's probably a low offer, but they'll make a bunch of them. And then put you a little short timeline. Because if you don't take it, they're going to make another offer. They're just going to keep making offers. Mm -hmm. See a lot of this after they have these weekend seminars in town where everybody gets rich by using other people's money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we'll start getting offers, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday that week, half price. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, seminar was good. A offer. We sent the offer over to that seller. And before they gave us the acceptance back, I was over here and found another house I like better. All I got to do is say, no. Cancel on that offer. It's not valid anymore. It's bored. Whatever you want to call it. I, it's not there anymore. You can do that any time up until acceptance. Once they've given you acceptance back, you've got a two-sided contract. Now, if you walk away, you're in breach. But here, this is, this is just laying it out. I'm offering you this. I gave you till 5 o'clock tomorrow to answer me. Now it's a uh, Saturday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and you answer me now, you went past that 24-hour timeline, so we, it's a counter to the counter because you missed your time. We've already covered this. We sent the offer over to the seller. The seller looked at it and said, oh no, I can't do that. But here's what I can do. And they start striking through on the contract. On your contracts, they're printed in black ink. Use blue ink to anything that you're going to write on the contract so it stands out. Because these contracts, are, I think they're like 13 pages now. And blue will pop out. And you'll, you'll see what somebody wrote. Uh, got that bilateral, communicated back, unilateral. I, once we have this two-sided, it's come back to the offer, first offer war. Now we have a two-sided bilateral contract as of today. We started working on this about a week ago. That's the date on the contract. And we've been working and negotiating and talking, and finally we've agreed. We've got a two-sided contract as of right now. In your contract, you have some time dates in there that uh, say you have got to get your uh, home, um, your mortgage lined up within seven days. You've got to apply for it. You've got to find out within seven days whether you can even buy insurance on this house. You may have a, a contingency to sell another house. You got all these things that have got to happen, um, but the only ones that matter 
on the contract right now are the ones that relate to the timeline estate. You've got a line in there that says seven days to apply for mortgage, seven days to get the home inspection, seven days to get the insurance lined up. All right, well, you got the home inspection done on the fourth day and found all these things wrong with the house and you get it back to them and they are either going to fix it or not. But you did it within the seven days. Had you missed your time and it's you know nine days into it and you call them and say, can we get the inspector in? Well, they have slept on their rights. They have lost the right for the to get out of that contract because of the condition. Mm. They missed that seven day window from the, the finalized date is when we both came into agreement. That was today. Mm -hmm. We both said, yes, deal. Now we deal with the um, finalized the finalized date because the seven days starts today, not from when we started the contract. The day we agreed on it. Yeah, the day we finally are both meeting of the minds, now we start the time for the inspection, the uh, financing and the insurance. I mentioned another one, home sale. That's a contingency as well. These are contingencies. That's a contingency, but it's not based on this seven-day window. They don't have to sell their house during that seven days. It may just rock on, but you're going to have in your contract a break clause. So if their house has been on the market, you know, another month or so, you have somebody else come along and say, I like your house, I'll buy it, I'll, here's my offer. Then you go back to these other people and say, we got another offer, it's better. Uh, you've either got to remove your contingency to sell your house or release the contract. And what do you think's gonna happen? Really? They don't release it from the contract because they, they can't buy this house because they sell that house. So that's so with the contingency of selling your property, the contract can still be taken from you. If another person coming in and say, "Hey, we want to buy this house," if you've got the break clause in it, it's called uh, it's on one of these slides. It's a forty-eight hour break clause. Is what you call it. That oh, wow. I will I'll, I'm going to keep marking in my house. I know you want it, mm -hmm. but you got to sell yours. If you can't sell yours before somebody else comes along, then they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. I got that uh, finalized state. Imputed knowledge. Imputed knowledge means if the agent knows it, it's as if the principal knows it. So if the principal is out of the country and the agent could make contact with them, but it's as though they knew because their agent knew. Yeah, well, their agent, that's the problem. You've got agency with them. So if I know you were, yeah. okay. you're the other agent called me and said, uh, um, we're accepting your offer. I, well, it wasn't my offer. It was my principal's offer. So I've got to tell them still. But when they tell me as is if it happened to them, did I make that mm -hmm. clear on that? Mm -hmm. uh, what you want to do, you don't want to give them a chance to say, I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Seller calls me and say, um, they're going to call me to tell me, congratulations, you bought a house. You don't want to start with, well, how are kids doing football today? Because that gives them the chance to say, okay. we've okay. changed our mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. pick up their phone, you call them, congratulations, you just bought a house. Mm -hmm. Now you communicate. Mm -hmm. Now we can talk about okay, that one went over my head. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> acceptance. Uh -huh. You have to let them know I'm taking your offer. Okay. Uh -huh. That's what this one's dealing with. The acceptance. You call them up and say, well, how was your day? Yeah, kids did great in football today. Mm -hmm. By the way, we found another house we like better, and we don't want that. Mm -hmm. okay. Now that deal's dead. Mm -hmm. But had you said, oh, for example, congratulations, you just yeah. bought a house. Okay. 
make a profit of brokers. We've done, <laughs> yeah, we've done the acceptance, the legal oh, thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. There's our cola. And y'all noticed on the little thing here, it wasn't a cola bottle or anything. It was a can. A can, yeah. because this is kind of, the shape of that bottle is copyrighted. I think I have to pay Coca Cola if I use this. Oh, but the cola, just the can, yeah. is not copyrighted. Yeah. Write cola on it. Yeah, I see you got all that photos out of the note also. Yeah, we have, to, we have to give credit. Bad note. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know who did that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna probably eventually get a tie with the cola on it. Y'all, when we get to math, I got a tie for math. Okay. Um, and I think a Coca Cola tie would be good. Yeah. It would be better than a can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excretory. Did we just talk about this? What does excretory mean? Uh, still in process. Still in process. We have a two sided contract that's probably sitting on the attorney's desk waiting on these contingencies such as financing, home inspection, maybe sell another home, there could be lots of things. But it is excretory when it's two-sided. Now I got another word, executed. That means we have done everything. The attorney has closed all the books, written all the checks, and we've walked out of the office with the keys. For sure. You just bought a house. Yeah, we just bought a house. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times they don't bring the keys to the table. And so, I don't show how to key. Yeah, but it's in a lock box, which we picked up yesterday. <laughs> wow. Why do you bring me the keys? <laughs> be courteous with other agents. Because, say, you've got the buyer, it's your duty for that buyer to walk through that house on your way to closing. Oh, to make okay. sure that house is just like it was when they bought it. It hadn't fallen in, hadn't burned down, there's no mm -hmm. people living in it. That's Alabama. Fire beware. That's one of the things you are responsible. Make sure that is an actual notice. You see somebody living in a house, don't go to closing. Go to, go to closing and tell us, so you need to get those people out of the house. Mm -hmm. Right by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's your, it's your responsibility to go yourself or you the and buyer. Them. It's the buyer's responsibility to make sure that house is the way they bought it. Not the agent. Well, well if, you, if you're their agent, don't you have responsibilities? Yeah. Yes. Then you probably should be their will. So it really is buyer agent beware <laughs> yeah yeah if you have the agency relationship <laughs> yeah. right, beware of you too okay that makes sense executed everybody's done now we have one other execute word just the the base of that word execute means to sign that's just a sign so you got three different execute words that they can fool with you on this test. Mm -hmm. And I can promise you they're going to. Mm -hmm. That's their job. We're going to see some test questions later where we deal with these. Mm -hmm. Let's take about five more minutes and then we'll do a break. Okay, you said executory. Executory is sitting on the attorney's desk. Yeah. Executed. Executed, the attorney's through with it. And then you said a third one. Third execute. one is just execute. Mm -hmm. That means you signed. I'm going to execute this contract. I'm going to sign it. Hey, up at the top here, we've got um, we've got a contract that meets all the elements of a valid contract. Now, if it meets all the elements of a valid contract, and one of the parties says, "No, I've just changed my mind." You can sue them for what's called specific performance. You want them to perform specifically as the contract says. Every property is unique. So let's just say you've got a business you need on this corner. This is the only corner in the world that'll work. And they won't sell you that corner after they said they would. You got a problem. You may be able to sue them and force them to sell you that piece of property mm -hmm. because it is unique. 
it's the only one that'll work. They can't say, well, get that one over there. It won't work. We already got statute of frauds, must be in writing, statute of limitations. Um, that's where you've got only a certain amount of time to bring a legal action. Estoppel. Estoppel is a legal term that means you missed one of your deadlines. You lost the right to get that. Let's just say your inspection deadline was seven days from the finalized date, and here it is two weeks later, and you remember you need to get the house inspected. You slept on your rights, and they went away. You can go back to that seller now and say, hey, can we do an inspection? And they're probably going to say, okay. you missed it. Had you done it at the time, you would have found all these bad things. But now, well, what if the, the buyer just pulls out of the deal? Can. So they just lost their earnest money. Right, that's why you want to get at least how much? $1,000. They will walk from $500, you'll be shocked. People just lose a walk away. Would um with the inspection and stuff, do they um is it usually like the agent going through that process no. or the buyer? Okay. Um, like we're not really helping them make sure they've done those things. Well, you're gonna advise them because you establish agency with them. Yeah. So they're gonna say, What inspector should I use? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And you're gonna say Oh, use Jim over here. He's the best one in the world. Got a little drinking problem, but if he shows up sober, he's good. Ooh, ooh. If you like information, man. Huh. Should you give them a list of people? That's what in there, but there's, I seem like my um, agent just like told me where to go and you put it in your zip code and then it lists. She probably gave me a site. Yeah, for the ones that are, the, you know, the licensed inspectors or whatever, because the website shows who's in your area that does them, that you can make contact with. Yeah, they're going to be um, about $400 to do a mm -hmm. surface inspection. He's not going to dig, like, he's not going to pull the carpet up looking for termites. Probably not going under the house looking for stuff like that either, because it's a separate inspection to look for termites. Has to be done within 10 days of closing. They'll also do a wood infestation report where they're looking for those things that may eat the wood in a crawl space. The inspector doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. He'll look under there and say, probably need to get a foundation guy to look at this. Mm -hmm. That's not good. So a home inspection is not necessarily a professional. It's a surface look. Surface, okay. He'll take his selfie stick and put his iPhone on it and yeah. look, in, yeah. You know, yeah. look at the um, chimneys. Because mine didn't get yeah, on the roof. No, he's not getting on the roof. with them, man. He'll put his camera up there and look at it. And he put his camera under where the snakes are in the cross <laughs> We've got an inspector here. Uh, and I sent him a picture of uh, uh, I'm somewhere in Texas where they opened this house and there must have been a hundred big old rattlesnakes. Oh, no, 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 sir. I don't I care. Said, yeah, I, no, you no, call no, me this time you go in there and crawl space. <laughs> no, baby. I mean, they were hanging from everywhere. So that mean they have been sitting there a minute. I don't know, but... Unless so. they had, uh, had a snake as a pet and they had babies. No, these are not. These are all oh. rattlesnakes. Oh, Lord, no. no. I wouldn't want that house. But that's the, what these guys, he could see a snake anywhere he goes. Um, uh, we had a video the other day about there was a copperhead in a gutter. How about not showing that, okay? And the, the people, they had to get this thing out. They had to get a snake removal oh, company to come oh, get it out. Yeah. So I'm not putting my hand in there. Well, we got sidetracked there. Back from break. <laughs> we had this, uh, we first started tonight. I had the little thing on our question parking lot. And here it is, a uh, den ad means add at the time you do the contract. Mm -hmm. You're going to add a personal property addendum to the contract that says you will leave the long tractor at no value. 
Now, if you don't put those words at no value on there, then the appraiser is going to have to give that long tractor a value. And it may mess up the appraisal numbers. So anything that you add as personal property, even if it's the, all the furniture in the house, you say add no added value. Our other one is amendments. M-E-N-D. We're going to mend something that's already been done and is for some reason has got a little tear or something in it now. And we've got to get our knitting needles out and we've got to mend this contract. And what you might have to mend it for is the closing date. All the paperwork didn't get processed. We thought we were going to get closed by the end of the month, but you know, a little issue came up on the title and it was going to take us two more weeks. All right, then we'll do an amendment. We're going to mend the contract that we've got, our excavatory contract that's ready to go. We've got to amend it with an amendment that says we're changing the closing date. Two weeks. And then both parties have signed that, and then the contract's good again. We'll have a breach. Got that? Um, some of the added things up there, you'll see, I missed this, our lead-based paint addenda. That'll be on there. If we have a FHA or VA financing, there'll be an addendum for that that says if this house does not appraise for purchase price, you can either renegotiate or walk away and get your money back. Well, pretty much all contracts are that way. If you, if I come to you and I buy your house for 200,000 and the appraiser says it's worth 190, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do? Is the mortgage company gonna give me 200 now? No. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to renegotiate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here are contract clauses. We are not attorneys. We're not allowed to write legal clauses. We're allowed to fill in blanks. You see all the blanks up there? Mm -hmm. We can fill in the date. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to law school, but I can get today's date off a calendar. <laughs> And it's going to go back, and this is an addendum. So what are we doing? We're adding something to it. This is personal property or something. Um, remember we talked about self-dealing, working with parent, child, spouse? Mm -hmm. There's an addendum here to tell you, hey, we're, it's my family we're dealing with. You better watch me. Backup clause. Uh, this, this whole, I just pull a few up here so you'd see what one looks like. You'd snip this out and put it in your contract. There's important stuff here because you're going to learn a whole lot about law, a whole lot about finance, accounting. You're not experts. You're not accountants. You're not attorneys. Um, I can show you how all the mortgages work, but I'm not going to get down to that level. I'm going to say, talk to a mortgage company. Mm -hmm because your situation is going to be different from anybody else's. I can't even, you can call a mortgage company right now, so what's today's rates? Mm -hmm. They can't tell you today's rates because they don't know your situation. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to pull a credit report on you. And you go in originally and say, okay, yeah, I've got perfect credit and I make a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you're qualified to do this. But then once they start running the numbers, all it can change. Uh, but you're going you're gonna to be tempted to give tax advice and legal advice, accounting advice. Don't. Just give them broad, you know, here's how I understand financing. <laughs> we got a little section on deeds. Deeds. Um, and I, may, I may have a picture of a deed here in a minute, but a deed is where the ownership transfers from the current owner to the new owner. And that's done on a piece of paper called a deed. That shows transfer at that one moment in time. What if 
that person's not real honest and they sell that property three times. Oh, good. Uh-oh. We may have a problem now. Mm -hmm. The way this deed works is the first one that gets their deed down to the courthouse and gets it recorded has first priority to the property. Even though these other people made that. They got the same deed, but they didn't get down there and get it recorded. So, Another issue you may have is somebody may be living in the house. Another problem you've got to fix, but that's not in the deed. In the deed, we've got what we're transferring to the new owner. What kind of ownership is it? <clears throat> Are there any restrictions on the ownership that you're getting? We'll get into defeasance and things in the in that deed um, to where so you can lose the party, the property based on what you did on it after you bought it. Ooh. What? Say that yeah. again. We'll go ahead and touch yeah. on it. Since I, since I opened that can of worms, let's just say I own a gas station. And I also own the piece of property next to my gas station. Okay. Now, I'm going to need to sell this piece of property because i got to have some money. Do I want to sell it to a gas station? No. Oh. Competition. So I'm going to sell this to somebody who wants to buy it, but I'm going to write in that deed that you are never to sell gasoline from this property. And if you do, I can get it back. Wow. We'll, we, we'll get in, we're going to talk about these more later, but that's a defeasance. You can defeat that owner. You take the property back from them. Wow. Now, um, I'll just take while we're explaining it. Um, I sold my property next to me and I sold it to an individual. And 10 years down the road, I get a call from Shell Oil Company. Mm -hmm. What do you think they want? They want that part of They want that new walls out of there. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. So they say, how much to take that clause out of the steam? So and before they can even sell it. Well, they can do anything they want except sell gasoline. They can sell uh, you know, dead roaches there. But if they wanted, if they wanted to sell it to someone that's gonna sell gasoline, it's still in the deed. It's still there. So it just, that still transfers. It transfers to all, and no matter how many people <laughs> buy it, it's still in that deed. So they come well, back to you. They're gonna have to come back to this original seller and say, "Hey, how much to take that clause out?" So what if the what if it was sold, 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 and for whatever reason something happens, you were no longer I've got Contact. Oh. They want the money. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we had um, on our contracts we had delivery and acceptance. You think maybe we got the same thing in a deed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You have delivery of the deed, and this is usually symbolic at the at the closing table. The attorney, after he fills it all out, he'll say, this is your deed, we're going to record it for you. And you're going to look at it and they hand it to you. That's acceptance. Mm -hmm. The delivery and acceptance right there. Now, I don't deliver it to you. We had the closing, I signed the deed, and I put it in a drawer. And I die. Oh. Mm -mm. And it's no value. It's like it never happened. Hmm. It's got to get to you during my lifetime. So the delivery, the acceptance has to be during the grantee's lifetime. I mean the grantor, the grantor's lifetime. That's the person that gave the property. I didn't lose y'all there. Mm -hmm. I kind of got well outside. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about something and got out in a rabbit hole. Um, the grantor must be alive at the time of delivery. I signed it, put it in a drawer, and died. So it never got delivered. So the so grantee. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. never accepted. 
So it never happened. That I don't wait a minute. Is that legal? And that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. Now, I could deliver it to a trust during my lifetime, even though this person's going to benefit, that doesn't matter. Oh. It's got to, the delivery has got to be made during the grantor's lifetime. We, did we still own when you uh, sold the property next to the station? Yeah, again, it could be the same time. Okay, okay, okay. The, the, well, in that case, the, the deed was transferred at closing. The person that bought it had the new deed, and it said in there, mm -hmm. one of the things we have on here is restrictions, right. conditions, mm -hmm. and that would be one of those. You okay. may never sell gasoline on this property. Okay, okay. If you want to, maybe well, we can talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. I um, got that. Uh, what's that mean? One. One, one sided, sided offer. Mm -hmm. Unilateral. I've made you an offer, and it's probably not a good one. Well, why? If you are not embarrassed by your first offer, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. You offered them too much. They took your first offer. I can tell you, you, you offered too much. Mm. <laughs> we what we call test in the bottom. Mm. Yeah, they got it on the market for two hundred. Let's throw one eighty out there. Mm -hmm. See what happens. And there's actually uh, school of thought says you should make the offer one eighty two seven thirteen. That makes it look like you really figured this right down to <laughs> <laughs> Confuse them, huh? Yeah. Let's take a legal benchmarks that must be made. Okay. okay. Legals? They were over here. Authority? Age. Age. Come on, give me the rest of it. Authority. Authority, age, and competency. Porks. 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 Legal porks. <laughs> this is the first time I've used legal porpoise, mm -hmm. but I tested it out on a couple of people and said, yeah, I think I can make the jump from porpoise to purpose. <laughs> and I think, well, if I put them all on the porpoise, <laughs> maybe we can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. First thing on the cold. Cold. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Consideration so can be either value or good. Oh, good. Yeah. Y'all see me in the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. What oh, I just gave you that one. <laughs> the value is good. Value or good. Is earnest money? No. No. What's earnest money? All right, now I gave you, I only said it one time, so I don't expect y'all to know it yet. But you will before you leave here within eight weeks. Earnest money oh, yeah. is money that Ernest puts down to show he's earnest about doing the deal. Can offer be involved? Yes. Up until when? An offer. The offer is accepted. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Up until acceptance. What happens when the <laughs> makes a mark, then it has to go back to the... It's void. It's void. No? Well, it's, what? it's, um, wouldn't be void, uh, I guess it, um, what would it be? Dead, I guess. Dead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because once they make that a mark, it's okay. okay. dead. Yeah, it's dead, okay. Because mm -hmm. you're the offeree, mm -hmm. I'm the offeror, mm -hmm. you got the, the contract, and you change the price. Mm -hmm. What happened to the contract then? It died. Mm -hmm. It's now a new offer. Mm -hmm. Back to the original to offer. The offer. Or, mm -hmm. And the roles change, offer equals offer, or, and mm -hmm. it, it can switch a couple of times. What, what is a contract on legal force? A verbal contract? Um, mm -hmm. With no legal force? Mm -hmm. Oh, not written. Contract that's not written. Um, well, it's not written. It, uh, it's a, well, I should have said real estate Implied. contract. Implied. 
a contract with no legal force. We had some uh, valid, voidable, void, and unenforceable. So a contract with no legal force, void. Remember Floyd wanted to buy the heroin? Mm -hmm. Can he take Amy mm -hmm. to court and make him buy it? purpose, illegal purpose. Yeah. A contract with no legal force was void from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Not void of all because it, others have legal force. Okay. It can be forced on one person or both. But this one has no legal force, so it was never valid. It was void from the beginning because it was for an illegal purpose. Okay. Yeah, Floyd wanted to buy the heroin. Mm -hmm. he, the judge is not going to make any sell it to him. <laughs> no, matter, no matter how good the contract is. So what was the answer for that one? So the one before I'm fired? Uh, with no legal force, no it's void. void. It's void. Okay, void. It, was, it never had legal force. Okay. What was the The valid, void, and voidable, and unenforceable, what are those up under? That's what we're talking about right now. These okay. are um, one of our, on our legals. Right. Your contracts right. will legals. be, if it's got all the legals, mm -hmm. then it is a valid contract. Okay, it's just, going, it's just different things. Okay. And if it's missing one of those, it depends on which one's it missing. If it's valid purpose, then it was never valid. If it was age, then it's void of all at the minor's yeah, option, okay. not the not void. Mm -hmm. And then, in, um, um, so you got void, voidable, um, unenforceable. Unenforceable. It's, um, it's it's not in writing. Mm -hmm. okay. The oral contract to buy real estate is unenforceable. It appears to be valid, but may not be. Doesn't that sound like? That contract appears to be valid. Uh, um, is that void? Void of all. Void of all. And who's? Oh, who, yeah. It's going to probably age or competence. What do you call it? Age, 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 age of competence. Maybe I should be looking, looking at the next slide. So we're in agreement. Everybody's happy. There's no duress. We're in a good place. We're moving forward. Is it? Is that the written? Yes. It is. Okay. okay. <laughs> you don't think you would put it, you would put it together, but you just like a mental note just from there. Yeah. You're well, uh, okay. Yeah. Written. Okay. And I try to prepare things mm -hmm. to make it easier to do too. So the statute of frauds means it wasn't in it wasn't in writing. In writing, you know, remember the other one, the statute of limitations. Limitations mm -hmm. means you it expired. Mr. Wright, mm -hmm. and there it is. Statute. Let's add. I try to put them in pairs, mm -hmm. so you remember. If you can get part of one, maybe you can get the other one too. Oh, specific performance. Um, uh, then the SP by it. No. We have a valid contract and you will not come to closing. You can change your mind. You don't want to sell me the house now. But this is the only but I can, I can, I can sue them. So that's what the suit is called. Special performance because I can't find another corner. That's right. But fit the, fit I want you to specifically perform as the contract stated. Oh, void and if it, if, if it was not legal for legal purpose of uh, the age, no well, other. Those things would be void of all. Age is void of all. What would they call it? Void. Oh, void. Um, it was void. It was never for legal. valid. Yeah, it's a legal, legal illegal purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, age mm -hmm. is void of all. Competency void of all. Authority. 
that, that that's kind of a gray area there because I can't put a sign over in the neighbor's yard say for sale by owner. I don't have the authority to do that. Well, what if someone's adult child said that they had a power of attorney, but some and they did, but some, there's been another power of attorney executed since that time. They presented one, but that's is not valid because there's another. Right, so new one would take Crescent. Right, that. but they closed on a deal. Not knowing the other one. Uh -huh. so or they may have known. Yeah, and you'll have this in wills too. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say, yeah, I got a will, mm -hmm. it's a copy. Mm -hmm. Might as well not have it. Mm -hmm. yeah, they will not accept a copy. Mm -hmm. They want the original. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that case, then the authority might not, they may might, not yeah, have Yeah, might not done. have the authority, so it might have been void of bull. Mm -hmm. Still void mm -hmm. But void, it was never. Um, mm -hmm. It went for a valid purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah, Floyd buying heroin. Y'all, okay. by the time this class is over, y'all gonna think Floyd's got an issue. I could not even <laughs> watch them anymore. No, not anymore. Not that he's gonna come around. I didn't know about Opie's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it appears to be valid, but subject to rescission is. Is that the one that's waterable? And they can ask you, see how we're asking uh, different, different ways. ways? That's mm -hmm. what they're going to do. Because you might not even know what rescission means. Uh, now, that's the that's why I've got such a long yeah. vocabulary list. I've tried to get the words that they the like PhD to throw at you. Yeah. Yeah. Those PhD people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the funny thing about it, the people that write the test are not real estate people. Okay, There's uh, statisticians that know how to write stems and all this and get it to the right amount of words. And We had a class with them about five years ago and it was funny. The person there said, yeah, this is how we write it. And the answers there and all of us instructors sitting out there said, yes, B. And she said, I don't know what it is, C or D, I don't know. She said, I don't know real estate. I know how to write questions. Wow. wow. And I'm thinking, woo. <laughs> That you can't say a word without using the word. What else? I'm going to have to have a line. You don't mind? You don't mind? You don't You agree to the terms? You agree to the terms? That's what I was trying to say. Gave you an offer? You accepted it. Might have been the counter offer that was accepted, but eventually both people have accepted and had a meeting of the minds with this contract. If party didn't offer basic change on offer, what it would become. Offer makes a change on offer, then there the offer war. Well, what happens to the offer? It, it died. It died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they made a mind, when they made a line on it, it's just like stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if party get an offer signs without making changes, it. That's accepted. That's accepted. We've got a two-sided accept. It's bilateral. Yeah, bilateral, two-sided, mm -hmm. finalized. Executed. Ex not executed. Uh, because it hadn't gone through closing yet. Okay, so it's executed. Okay. After offer resigns. What happens? Oh. It's bad enough, isn't it? Yeah, we have a, um, we have a, after offeree signs, I, I, I didn't make this clear. Let me, let me make it clear here. After the offeree signs, we have a two-sided, bilateral. bilateral, accepted contract. But what else do we have to do? Get it to the, uh, or not exit, that's the, what it is. Um, We've got to mm -hmm. convey the acceptance. Mm -hmm. got to because we don't have we don't have a two sided deal. So the other side knows we so do. So got to com communicate it. Yeah, they communicate back the acceptance. Mm -hmm. So first thing after the offeree signs, we have a, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, we have a contract here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the next thing. That's this. What? Congratulations, mm -hmm. you just bought a house. Mm -hmm. 
Because without that acceptance part of it, there's no contract. Mm -hmm. Still waiting. Ex Tory, whose desk is it on? The attorney. The attorney. Every, oh, we got still some things that got to be done. We've got the contract, everything's in place, and we're doing the title work, and uh, we're getting the financing all lined up, but these things are happening. Is that in process? Yes, this is in process. After it becomes a contract. Mm -hmm. And? Add? When do we add an addendum? Um, after the contract is... Made. At the time of the contract. When we write the contract, that's when we add things to it. We want to add personal property. We want to add, uh, you're going to leave the road. We're going to add, you're going to leave the car. You're going to add these things at the time we're giving you the contract. Because you need to see the big picture. All right, well, I'm giving you this much for the house, but I'm asking you, for all your furniture and your claws and your, your car and wait a minute, mm -hmm. you replace the balance here. Mm -hmm. okay, so I had to, uh, mm -hmm. This is the way they will have things on their your test. They'll seen. have not. We did one of these mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. and the way I do is I come that through there and look. I take that word out. And say which is required for a contract, and I will lay out legal purpose. Yes, legal. Yes, legally. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nineteen. That's it. You don't even need to read the next one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That'd be eighteen, and then. That's a good suggestion. I'll take the nine out of. That's the way I do them. Yeah. I take that out and then read. All right. That makes sense. Because here I'm looking for like a double negative, mm -hmm. and that confuses me. Mm -hmm. I know the attorney said, is it not true that it's not true that this is a false statement? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of false, well, how, how would you handle that? Because I saw that on, in the questions, you know, which one is false? How do you count them? The same way. Which is, which is false is not, which is false except. They got a bunch of little words like that, but they'll normally uh, put it in bold print like this. Mm -hmm. Know what the other party wants, voluntary consent, the rest, and voluntary. What? Knowing what the other party wants, voluntary mm -hmm. consent. Yeah, maybe. Meeting other minds. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody's on the yeah. same page. Yeah. You know what the other party wants. Mm -hmm. No. No. You stand there. Is it being voluntary consent? Voluntary consent. Involuntary. Hey. Hey. I think it's still a. Mm -hmm. right, we are in agreement. It's not knowing what the because uh, I may know what you want and I'll give it to you. It's the voluntary and the rest. Meeting of the minds, we have voluntarily consented to this. Okay. Um, and expect them to try to throw you like that. Um, but then they'll always have two that you can look at them and say, those are wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Here we got meeting in the minds, duress, I know that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And then by material. Yeah, no, that doesn't say, oh, that's answer the same thing as duress. Mm -hmm. So you said for A, knowing, I may know what you, what you, what, you know, we may know what each other want in the contract, but, but we have not agreed. Yeah, so we put it on okay. paper. And it's not I know you want my boat. Yeah. 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 But it's not a contract. Yeah. So we have not really agreed that the boat's going with the deal. That's good. So we got a voluntary consent. How long I can sit on say and be you just keep on coming out. Executed. It's always signed by everyone. Yes, executed. Um <laughs> executed is completed, is it? Executed is after the attorney's through with it. Executed oh, okay. is finished, so it's got to be D, right? Got no? Me. Yeah. Huh? D? D. Was, what is after everyone is signed, mm -hmm. we got a two sided signed. bilateral oh, contract. Oh, bilateral contract. Once after executed is. Ex 
executory uh -huh. is sitting on the attorney's desk. Mm -hmm. Executed it means he's written all the checks. Mm -hmm. Executed. 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 Hey, I'd like to buy this hundred acres, you know, thousand dollars an acre. We'll take it all. But so is it D buyer and seller or just the seller? Option contract must be signed by. Um, um, let me go there. Um, so we've got these options. It says, all right, I'm going to offer you. You're the seller. Mm -hmm. I'm going to offer you a hundred thousand dollars for this property and. Uh, I can't close it till uh, January 2022. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, what's in it for me? Because remember, the first thing we had here was consideration. Mm -hmm. Every contract must have something for something. Mm -hmm. So if she's going to give me a promise that she will sell me this property, am I going to have to give her something mm -hmm. for that promise? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what do you think it's going to be? Mm -hmm. Money. Mm -hmm. It's called an option premium. I may give you a thousand dollars for you to hold that property off the market for one year. Then in one year, I get to choose whether I want it or don't want it. Mm -hmm. You have no no say in it at that point. It's this is up to the buyer. If it's they want to strictly buy. up to the. Uh, I guess so. I'm I'm the optionee. I'm getting the option to buy that property. You're the option or. Mm -hmm. It obligates you to sell at some future point, future price, but does not obligate the buyer. Why? Uh, Why didn't the uh, buyer? Well, Walt Disney. I was going to say, did he, they record those? Uh, how do they not know it? You, yeah, you probably want to record that to, to keep somebody else from getting tied to it. Yeah. But say, Walt Disney, he might have gone down there. He might have been playing a bigger game. And trying to fool people over here, thinking he's going to buy. He might be putting options over there too, to, to try to throw mm -hmm. people off the scent. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to let those expire. Mm -hmm. At the end of a year or two years or whatever it is, that contract just dies because no one executed it. I mean, but the uh, the seller couldn't um, require that. Seller can't. Seller's given the buyer the right. Mm -hmm. To buy that property in the future at a price we negotiate today, mm -hmm. only the buyer can, Just the can, can yeah can can uh, uh, exercise that option. Mm -hmm. The seller already signed saying I will do this, mm -hmm. and I took your money saying I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So a year or two years from now, when I decide yeah I do want this property, all I got to say uh, closing this be it this attorney at this time. And it'll close. So or I'll sue you for what? Breach of specific performance. Lease options work the same way, right? Uh, lease option. Um, what we do in this business is we don't want to give the tenants too many rights. So we'd rather um, do it as a lease with an option. This option standing separate just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be related to the lease. Right. Your lease, you may be a good negotiator and say, okay, $100 out of my lease payment every month goes toward the purchase price. Gotcha. And I may say, no. And you say, how about uh, $50 of it? You don't say that. No. You still don't say that. I say, no. <laughs> 
if you, if, <laughs> those with the gold make the rules. Mm -hmm. That's the golden okay. rule in this business. Okay. If you've got the upper hand, you control Keep it. it. Okay. Keep it. And an option like that, you probably got the upper hand. You don't care if you sell it to them or not. So have we got this one? Is a buyer? Option contract must be signed by the who? The seller. Seller. Oh, okay. Does not have to be signed by the buyer. Probably needs to have your name on it, saying I've got the right to do this. The attorney doesn't even know what happened until it falls on his desk. Buyer and seller? No, just the seller. All right, we got 25 minutes. We're still awake. We're doing good. <laughs> Consideration. Required for a valid contract? The proper contract form. Provide for a valid, yeah, valid contract. Oh, consideration. Consideration. That's it. You don't have a proper contract form. You can write it on a napkin. <laughs> Earnest it's money, is that required? Two pocket and a... <laughs> is earnest money required? No. How about two witnesses? No. No. See how y'all picking this up? It's not that hard. It's just a yeah. lot of little pieces. You gotta hook them all together. Cause Shug Knight and, and uh, Tupac they <clears throat> made a contract on a napkin. On a napkin for him to get out of jail. He had three a three record deal with Shug Knight for a million dollars to get out of jail. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a free nugget. <laughs> napkin is perfectly legal contract. I've heard it several done on napkins. What's the latest an offer can be revoked? Anytime before accepted. Good. See how quick this is. It's all starting to stick together. Oh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> she just she jumped over those first two. <laughs> Intention stated. Whoa! Y'all see how oh, she jumped out of that one? Yes. Like she <laughs> sees before. <laughs> Let me see what she was talking about. She drank the name. We talked about this at the beginning of class. We expressed Andy, first time he said the chair, he expressed mm -hmm. what he wanted. Floyd expressed what he wanted. They had a meeting of the minds. Now, when they sit down, they don't have an express contract. They have a, what kind? Implied. Implied contract is what they have now. But originally, first time it's expressed, all of our real estate contracts are expressed. Every detail is expressed. Not indeed. All right, indeed. Signed by the grantee, signed by the grantor, description of property, consideration, consideration noted. Mm. No. Signed by the grantee, signed by the grantor. The consideration is not. Oh, that's not in there. Yep. Indeed. What's in the deed? Description of property. So it's got to be deed. Consideration. No. Consideration is in the deed. We got to have to do it later. But. You go ahead and description the of the, the grand tour. How about this? You're going to be sitting on lot 55926 on the corner of 8269. So that's going to be there. Uh, for y'all, we all get confused here. Who has to sign it? The, the grand the, the the people the seller? The grand seller the who's the, the grand tour. The grand tour mm -hmm. mm -hmm. has to sign. Because they just get they get that one again. Okay. Not in the deed. Not in the deed. So who's not signing it? The grantee. The grantee. grantee. We we done lost our man. So we're trying right. to break down the obvious stuff. Or is the or is the give or? But is the is the is the grantee or? A grantee's getting. Yeah. yeah. That's the guarantee. But why don't they have to sign? They don't have to sign. The the, don't have to they have to be named in the deed, but the grantee does sign. not have to sign it. Just the grantor. Just the grantor. The give or. The give or. Yeah, the give or. Okay. And sign for the the gitti. but the gitti doesn't have to sign it. Oh my goodness. These other things are in the deed: description of property, consideration, 
Uh, there's five things that do. We'll get to. What happens when the offeree makes a mark on the offer? It even accepted it. It becomes it's voidable. Not so when it's even signed it, and so to my account of offer, it even the practice of law becomes voidable. Mm. It's a counter offer. It's going to become a counter offer. Well, it's like you stabbed it, mm -hmm. but now you're going to give it back to him with the blood on it, saying, "Do you accept the you blood?" Resuscitate it. <laughs> Come here. Oh, okay. That's that's not tricky. Now yeah. yeah. they're not tricky. <laughs> well, not tricky. They challenge you. Challenge it. Yes. And this well, is the way they challenge you. So <clears> they take things that you have seen together in pairs and twist it around. Mm -hmm. So look at it this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Go back to so, yeah. right. what is not, we what is a type consideration in a negotiation. Now that's the way I like you to say it. What is a type consideration? All right, look at those. Which one of those are? Good, Good valuable. So it will be a consideration. All right, what it is. So look at the shirt here again. Cold. We had. Gold, that would be good or valuable? Yeah. That would be valuable. Oh, gold is a type of currency. Yes. Yeah, I would be so past consideration is yes. not. And good, uh -huh. is that a consideration? That was a little kiss yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah. And valuable, valuable. That, yeah. Was, that was the kiss yeah. too. So past consideration. I mean, valuable is a Gold. Uh -huh. All right, so which one of those is not Past right? consideration. I pass consideration. If we're negotiating, and you say, well, Steve, three years ago, I, I came and got you out of jail. It don't you st you're right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. That's in the past. Contract will be affordable if signed by <coughs> legal, someone just legally competent, a minor. D, minor. Minor. <laughs> a minor. <laughs> Sometimes I like I write these late at night and I get a little silly on some of them. Uh, yeah, minor. If it's a, it can be voidable if signed by a minor. Now someone who's judged legally competent. Incompetent. Yeah, and it's been incompetent, but this says competent. Mm -hmm. Someone went bankrupt three years ago. They can sign a contract. They might not be able to get financing. They can sign the contract. Mm -hmm. And then the my error, that's the one that goes under the ground. Mm -hmm. You know those guys make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We we did a house deal with one. I said, like, how much? Mm -hmm. I'm still not going down in that hole. And, and then right. they spend most of their time, they spend half the time going down and coming back up. Yeah. Right. Half of their shelf is just, just getting uh, <laughs> I don't care. A friend of mine, her husband is a minor. Uh -huh. Yeah, not, enough, not enough money. Negative health. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Another one of my silly ones. Uh, Vo void. void. It wasn't. It wasn't that Never to begin with. Okay. So it's not virtuous. It's not mm -hmm. a really good contract. It's not virtuous. <laughs> <laughs> Statute of frauds refers to writing. Statute of limitations refers to. Maximum time. Maximum time. Wait. Look at that girl go. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to have her up here Thursday night. I'm going to sit down over there. <laughs> My nap pad. But she can do this fast. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I look down and look up. There are two more on. Court order. Sale myself refuses to stay after her contract. Specific performance. Uh huh. Which does not happen in a real estate transaction. Exonerate. Oh, oh, look at you, Fred, all of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got our three execute words mm -hmm. there, though. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this means you have signed mm -hmm. a document. Mm -hmm. Executed is after executory. I probably should have lined them up. Mm -hmm. Executory is at the attorney's office on his desk waiting on something to happen before it can be closed. Once it's closed, it is executed. And we're done with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your strongest one? No. 
list agent was the last time agent to present offer mm-hmm. consideration mm-hmm. not required for valid contract. Mm-hmm. Got that mm-hmm. consideration, which is true. Uh, we we talked Asian earlier about changes it. for principal. Uh, no, no. B, D. B is true. Remember okay. we talked about Tamara's reputation. These other agents know that she holds offers. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. won't present those offers like she should. Mm-hmm. So you've learned. In fact, they, they got a posting on Facebook. Tamara's page. Think she's done wrong. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of them is she. She will not allow the buyer's agent to present the offer to her sellers. She can't do that, can she? She has got to allow the, the selling agent to present the offer. And vocabulary in this business, listing agent, you think that's the selling agent, right. but no. The listing agent is the agent that put the house on the market for sale. Mm-hmm. The selling agent is the one that had the buyer. That makes no sense. There's some other we'll get into that we have to learn. Which is not an academic. Change closing day. Personal property to remain. Sell it to paint. A? Uh, A, yeah. Mm -hmm. We ain't talk about this, so it's going to be A. Mm -hmm. Which is not an addendum? Or which is an addendum? Uh, Change closing day. Perfect. Now here's, I think the which amendment is okay. Okay. That's an amendment. The is an amendment. That's an amendment. Yes, we're amending a contract that's already carved in stone. Right. And it's got that time of the essence, Mm -hmm. and we'll be in breach if we don't get a contract extension, which will be an amendment. Because all of those had already be a part of the deal. Yeah. Before. Yeah, you did this one at the, because your uh, buyer is getting a, a VA loan. Mm-hmm. The FHA VA addendum says that if the property does not appraise for purchase price, you can renegotiate or walk. Mm-hmm. Amend. Mm-hmm. Personal property to remain addendum. at no charge. That's added. To, I leave all your furniture. Seller to paint, mm-hmm. that would be in the original contract too. Because you can't negotiate, to get a it. finalized, executory contract, and then come back to the seller and say, you know, we go out back to the house, we think it needs paint. Mm-hmm. And they'll say, ha, ah, ha, too late. Too late. Yeah. I got it. What do they call it? Slip on their rights? Yes. Slip on their rights. Slip on their right. Um, what was that word? Um, I forgot the word now. Who is it? Slept on your rights. It's not you did it. I mean, you didn't use another word. Is it specific performance? Uh, mm-hmm. Statue of limitations mm-hmm. is where you would sleep on your rights. Mm-hmm. You miss the time. Mm-hmm. I, I threw in a couple of these because on your test, 60% of it is recall. What is the definition? of an amendment, an addendum. But then 40% of the test is where you need to take information, add it to vocabulary words that you have learned, and shake all this stuff up in a bag and throw out an answer. We got a situation here. Let's just do one of them. John, a homeowner, answers the telephone, listens to a solicitor make a five-minute sales pitch for weed gardening. John responds, no thank you, and hangs up. Two days later, John returns home from work to find a crew gardening in his yard and a bill for $200 sitting on the porch. When John tells the weed representative that he never asked for the service, the weed representative said, it looks much better, doesn't it? You got the service, now pay for it. John agrees the work was of good quality, but refuses to pay for it. Mm-hmm. He's later served a summons to appear in the magistrate court because of this dispute. How is this judge going to rule? He didn't. Right, just based on our contract session tonight, what have you got to have? Agreement. 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 Agreement.
you got to have an agreement. But they didn't have an agreement. They offer and acceptance. He they didn't made accept. the offer and he, he didn't, didn't accept it. So when they go before the judge, what's the judge going to say? The judge, you don't tell them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that's right? Because we're front, sorry, but that's not the correct of police. All right, for John, uh, because he did not accept Weed's offer. Mm -hmm. He did. There was no contract. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter if they did the work. Mm -hmm. Even at a good price, they done that pay. Mm -hmm. They done that good. good. Yeah, yeah. that was real good. Yeah, there's a place right there. Uh, I got a bunch of these, but we're just going. Y'all got the gist out of that one. Uh, contract questions. Uh, when you are at home on your computer and go to our website, you can get the PowerPoints off of our website. Once you open a PowerPoint, you can read all this in big okay. print, not the little tiny handout print. Mm -hmm. But you can read this. Anything when you're in the slideshow mode of PowerPoint, these will be active. So this link right here, you can click on that at home, and it'll open up a page for you with some contract questions that came mm -hmm. from YouTube. I get a lot of stuff from YouTube. I got links on there to people on YouTube. Uh, one is called Prep Agent. Uh, the guy must have a thousand videos on there to where it's he just does vocabulary. He just he he has people you can you can sign up with him and you get like an hour on the phone with him and he just goes down a list. What does this mean? Tell me about this. Tell me about this. And he's just quizzing people. And you so you can actually buy time with him. Yeah. And he'll And he's got tests it. that you can take. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's like 50 bucks or something. But uh, uh, you'll, when you get on, when you start reading on sites, you're going to have a lot of people refer to him. So he really helps because, in fact, I, this, I stole this from him. The addendum uh, on personal property. He says personal property. Uh, another word for it is chattel. It's what? Chattel. chattel. Chattel means personal property. But unless you've been to real estate school, you would never know that chattel is a vocabulary word in the real estate test. Mm -hmm. so, so chattel is a word you're not going to know, not going to remember, but it's personal property. So prep agent says, how about if you tie something together like chattel, cattle, moves? Oh, well, you can do that. I can steal that and put it in my glass. Mm -hmm. So, chattel, mm -hmm. cattle, mm -hmm. moves. It's personal property. Personal property moves. Mm -hmm. Real property doesn't. Gotcha. So, a lot of stuff on YouTube. There's links to Joe and other places. Hey, go in there and look at them. There's a contract video. Um, I don't think this may be the one on Barney and uh, Fred Flintstone buying and selling houses. <laughs> um, I've got a video when Barney Fife got his real estate license. <laughs> you don't know that, did you, Barney? Yeah, it was an episode where Barney got a real estate license. I got a little clip on here, but it is time for us to Not call it tonight. Barney got Yeah, Barney got a, it's a cute little video. It's on YouTube. He had his filter with him, didn't he? No.